I'm Reverend Christine McFarlane here with Unity of Springfield. We are happy to have you join us here this morning and know wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here in Unity and we are glad to have you this morning. Barb and Sal were so kind as to start us off with some prelude music and we're gonna continue on with them sharing their song, Amazing Grace. There we are. Amazing Grace to the tune of House of the Rising Sun. And it's a wonderful song of redemption and realization. So, and it never ever gets old. You ladies that was great Thank a great you. reminder so we join together in prayer today with unity of the eastern shore in Fairhope Alabama we join our hearts across the many miles and we prepare for our service today let us join together in prayer taking in a breath and releasing that breath we drop into our heart, we open our hearts wide, and we prepare for the wisdom that comes forth. We affirm God breathes through us. And as we know that truth, we tap into that wisdom. The wisdom of the source of the universe flows in and through us. And each moment of our day, we pause to remind ourselves of this truth. During times of confusion, the wisdom of God flows through us and we are equipped with everything we need 
to know what it is we are to do. Thank you, God, for this wisdom and this truth. We affirm that in our hearts and our minds, and so it is. Amen. We do have some announcements today. Tuesdays at 11, Ruth hosts our Silent Unity service in Zoom. It's a new month, so join us for our Silent Unity service on Tuesdays at 11. Chris Farishan on Tuesdays at 5.30 leads us in a guided meditation. If you need a little direction and some guidance as you go into this time of stillness to be refueled, I invite you to join Chris Farishan at 5.30 on Tuesdays. On Wednesdays at 5.30, Karen's leading us in the gathering meditation. This is more of a contemplative service, and so it gives you more time for introspection and to just center into your very being. If there is any interest in a new members class, we have had someone request a new members class, but we do need a few more people uh, to make it a class. So if that's something that's calling you, please let me or the office manager, Chris Farishan, know, and she will let me know and we'll get that in the works. Don't forget our annual meeting is March 28th. Many of you should be receiving, if you haven't already, our annual meeting packet. By show of hands, I won't be able to see, but other people in the room, if you have gallery view, maybe just raise your hand if you've already received your, your annual meeting packet, just so we have an idea of how well it's circulating so far. Okay, and if you haven't sent in your membership renewal cards in order to vote at the annual meeting, we do need to have your membership renewal cards. And so please remember to send those in. Ken is going to be teaching a writing workshop on creating your legacy, and that's March 13th and March 20th from 2 to 3.30. If that's something that is calling to you, that is in the works as well, please send your email information into the office so Chris Fairshawn can let Ken know how many people are interested and get you in on any email correspondence that may be going out. So we have an affirmation in unity. I invite you to join me in saying this together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the source of all good. Our vision statement together, a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. And our mission statement, we recognize God is love, individualized in all people. Therefore, we provide a positive environment for spiritual growth that empowers all to be God's love in the world. And today's daily word, March 7th, is World Peace. And Linda Schneider will be sharing our daily word with us today. Daily word is world peace in our affirmation. Celebrating diversity and affirming unity, I am a presence of peace in the world. The road to world peace begins with my open hearted acceptance of those who are different from me. Our world is vast and diverse, and its people come from a wide variety of cultures and histories. The more I learn about those whose lives differ from mine, the more I can appreciate their perspectives and empathize with their struggles. When I make the decision to understand others, I discover that judgment fades in the light of compassion. Today, I sow peace through my acceptance and understanding. Peace in the world grows as I join my brothers and sisters in celebrating the glory of human diversity and affirming oneness in God. From Isaiah 2, 4, nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Again, our daily word is world peace and our affirmation, celebrating diversity and affirming unity. I am a presence of peace in the world. Thank you, Linda. 
And now we'll join together with Salo as she shares some special music today. So I invite us to take in a breath. And as we breathe in and as we breathe out, we feel ourselves just become still, open to that awareness of the Christ nature in that sacred space within us. We're open to the expansive unfolding beauty of what we find within. We allow our hearts to become open even wider 
to allow in that Christ nature and that Christ presence that comes through as our inner wisdom and Christ nature. So breathing into this space, becoming more aware, we let go of anything we have been holding on to, any adversity, any obstacles, anything that appeared to have been in the way, we set it aside. We allow ourselves to be cared for and loved in this sacred space. In this space, we know there is no one and nothing against us. I invite us to settle in and listen to that still small voice of our creator. For what that message is for you today, we wait. Thank you, Creator, for these moments of divine wisdom. Thank you for the inspiration. Thank you mostly for the love. I thank you for being on this journey with me. Thank you for reminding me of all I need to remember. And so as we take in a breath and as we breathe out, we allow ourselves to come back to this time and this place, refueled and restored, centered in who we are. And full of life and love. And when you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes become more aware of the room around you. Welcome back. Today we are talking about forgiving wisdom. 
And in our continuing look at our 12 powers within us series, this month, one of the 12 powers that we focus on is the power of wisdom. We are cautioned throughout Charles Fillmore's writings not to confuse wisdom with knowledge. We are reminded by him that wisdom is not information, that no matter how many degrees we may have, universities and libraries cannot give us wisdom. In those wonderful institutions, he says, we can attain information, which is important to have. And longevity on the planet and living to a ripe old age can certainly give us experiences, but neither one of them guarantees us wisdom. Knowledge and information keep us on our, in our heads. Knowledge and information, they keep us in our heads. Well, wisdom can only arise from within us. As we listen to the still small voice as we just did, as we listen to God directing us through the myriad of daily choices. And we know, don't we, that our choices create our lives. We have a choice to be happy or not. We have a choice to judge another person or not, to send love into a situation or not, to gossip or not. We have the choice to be ego-centered or God-centered. It's all a choice. And the wisdom to make those choices comes from within us. In his book on the 12 powers, author Charles Roth says this, to obtain wisdom from within, we must empty ourselves of previous programming previous beliefs and opinions. We must attain an attitude of, I don't know, and I admit I don't know, but I'm eager to learn. What I'm hearing him say is that wisdom comes from setting aside the ego stuff, the preconceived notions and making a commitment to being teachable and open to spirit. In our last week in seminary, we're saying goodbye to friends and colleagues and the once in a lifetime experience we had at Unity Village. And believe me, there were bittersweet moments, moments of weakness, of feeling like we were a walking paradox of emotion. The feelings were intense. I was sad to be leaving my support system behind. I knew how much I would be missing my classmates who had in just three years become my best friends. Eventually, many of them came as close as family to me. The bonding that occurs is impossible to describe. And we knew we would soon be saying goodbye to one another. And I knew just as well that soon I'd be leaving the sacred grounds of Unity Village that I had called home for three years. And on the flip side of that, we absolutely couldn't wait to get started in our ministries. We began planning and gathering everything we would need, all of the resources. And we sent out our resumes and we began interviewing absolutely ready to do an I dream of Jeannie Blink and get to where we wanted to be. I think each of us can relate to the roller coaster ride I just described, especially with regards to the experiences we have had the past year spent mostly at home. I believe every one of us has been experiencing equal and opposing emotions. It's been a challenging year in many ways, but I think we can now start to begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So how do we set our spirit free? One of the central focuses of Jesus's teachings was on forgiveness. 
We must release old hurts and judgments to make room for the harmonizing peace of God to move in and through and as us. And seeds of love won't grow in toxic soil. Forgiveness clears the space and makes room for the love in our hearts. And we know there is not one person to blame for the pandemic that swept every nation. There is an ancient Hasidic tale about a rabbi who came upon a weary traveler who had fallen asleep on a ledge near the top of a cliff. He watched as a snake crawled toward the sleeping man and just as a snake was about to strike a branch fell and killed the snake. The man was awakened and jumped back from the cliff just as the edge of the cliff caved in. The rabbi said, who are you that God should perform two miracles for you in the same minute? He replied, I am just an ordinary man, but it is my habit before I fall asleep at night to forgive everyone who has wronged me that day. Ah, said the rabbi, now I understand. It is no wonder that God is watching over you. Forgiveness is divine. Forgiveness is divine. That goes for forgiving ourselves or for forgiving others. The word forgive in the language that, that Jesus spoke, Aramaic, means to untie. Forgive means to untie. When we refuse to forgive someone, we remain tied to them as surely as if we were being held by shackles. If some event of our past keeps bringing up resentment from within us, we are stuck there and cannot move forward. And we become immobilized. In the second chapter of Mark, we find the story of a paralyzed man who was brought for Jesus. Four people carried him on his bed and because they could not get through the crowd of people to Jesus, they lowered the bed through the roof. And Jesus tells the man his sins are forgiven. And when that causes a stir amongst the crowd, he says in verse nine, which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up, take your mat and walk. And the man immediately took up his mat and walked. Well, there's some interesting metaphysics in this story, aren't there? Have we ever found ourselves feeling paralyzed, immobilized, unable to move, speak, maybe emotionally stuck somewhere we don't want to be? When we are in that state, if we turn to Christ within for help, that divine presence as demonstrated in the Bible story has the power to forgive sin. Now, I know some of you are wondering, she said that word, the sin word, and we don't teach in unity sin the way many religions do. Here's what we believe about sin. Sin is actually an archery term that means missing the mark, missing our target, getting off course, making a mistake. And here's an acronym for us because we're good at those lately. S-I-N stands for self-inflicted nonsense. Do you like that? Self-inflicted nonsense. Sin is simply making an error in judgment. But if we stay in a place of unforgiveness with ourselves or anyone else who's made a mistake, it is us who is in a state of paralysis, unable to move and stuck in a place that does not serve us. Through forgiveness, we open the door to spiritual movement and we begin to transcend that which is binding us. Wayne Dyer says, when we forgive another person, we are really saying, I no longer give you the power to control how I think, feel, or behave. I now personally take responsibility for myself. 
When we hold on to resentment toward another, we give them permission to hurt us, not only once, but continually. We give control over to them. We create our own jails and we become prisoners without hope of awakening to happiness. We become hostages to ourselves. We imprison ourselves by our unwillingness to let go. And guess what? Every prisoner needs a jailer. And by practicing unforgiveness, we create our very own personal unhealthy trinity, judge, jury, and jailer, the trinity of unforgiving. Not exactly what we want to cultivate in the garden of life, is it? By choosing to stay stuck in the past, we're choosing to enslave ourselves. Psychologist Abraham Maslow said, there is no such thing as a well-adjusted slave. When we are busy reliving yesterday's news, blaming others, we rob ourselves of the present moment. We agree to be the thieves of our own lives. Buddy Hackett once said, I've had a few arguments with people but I never carry a grudge. You know why? Because while I'm carrying a grudge, they're out dancing. And grudges can get heavy. They weigh us down. And it's hard to dance through life when we're weighted down by old judgments, resentments, and bags of victimhood. There was a teacher once who had each of her students bring to class a clear plastic bag and a sack of potatoes. For every person they had refused to forgive or held a judgment against, the students had to write the name and date on the potato and put it in the plastic bag. Some of the potatoes got, and the bags got pretty heavy. They were told to carry the bag with them everywhere for one month beside them, in the car seat while they were driving, next to their desks, at the movies, everywhere they went. And the hassle of lugging around this sack of potatoes with them made it clear what a weight they were carrying spiritually. Their unforgiveness bags made them aware of how time consuming and energy draining it was to carry all of that around with them in addition to how embarrassing it became. Because the condition of the potatoes deteriorated to a nasty slime and they began to see that this was a great metaphor for the price they were paying to keep their pain and negativity. The next time we find ourselves making a decision not to forgive, to hold on to the same tired old story, when we find ourselves being cast in the role of long suffering martyr one more time, let's ask ourselves, isn't my bag heavy enough already? And then let it go. I can't help but think about how letting go relates to the Lenten season. Lent is a time of year in the Christian liturgical calendar where many Christians prepare for Easter Sunday 40 days prior. Believers are asked to prepare by releasing something. So I have another acronym that may work for some of us as we prepare for Easter. L-E-N-T, Lent. Let's eliminate negative thinking. The grace of forgiveness heals our hearts. And Charles Filmer called forgiveness, love erasing error. I love that. Love erasing error. Would you rather be right or be happy? Forgiveness requires that we give up the right to make the other person wrong. And some people really don't wanna do that. Some amongst us really want the other person to be wrong. Holding on to old hurts, rehashing the old stories is neither right or wrong, good or bad, it's a choice. 
But it's very important to ask the question, why am I making this choice? Why am I choosing to lug around this slimy, heavy, embarrassing bag of unforgiveness and judgment when I could be out dancing? What's our payoff for holding on to victimhood? Is it whatever we need? What's our payoff for holding on? It's important to be very clear about this because rest assured, we would not make the choice to hold on to it if it wasn't a payoff. Finding out why is crucial if we want to have a better life. Forgiveness and letting go are not easy. And that's why we need divine help. Jesus on the cross spoke the words, Father, forgive them. Even he needed help, and it was his willingness to allow God to work through him that enabled him to forgive. We have all felt betrayed, every one of us. And let's be honest, we have all betrayed someone else at some point in our lives. We have all done the best we could in any given moment, and we've missed the mark. And when we realize that, what is then required if we want to move forward is a spiritual practice we call forgiveness. Joan Berzanko in her book, Fire in the Soul said this, forgiveness is not the misguided act of condoning irresponsible, hurtful behavior nor is it a superficial turning of the other cheek that leaves us feeling victimized and martyred. Rather, it is the unfinished, the finishing, excuse me, of old business that allows us to experience the present free of contamination from the past. We have all been treated unfairly at some point in our lives, but hanging on to anger and grief takes so much work takes a lot of effort. It zaps our aliveness, robs us of our energy, and we begin to feel wounded and bound. Forgiveness is about giving up our story, releasing the old to embrace the present moment. It's been said that forgiveness is giving up all hope of a better yesterday. You like that? I'm gonna say it again. Forgiveness is giving up all hope of a better yesterday. So who in this room has a tired story? And what I mean by that is something we have carried around like a ball and chain for a long time, reliving it, sharing it with people, chapter and verse over and over again. We retell the story to everyone who will listen recounting the wrong that was done. He was mean to me, she said this, they did that. Sometimes we keep it around for so long it becomes part of us. We can't tell after a while where the old story ends and the new one begins. We create the story in our relationships. The characters change, there are new names, new faces, but the same old storyline being played over and over again. Why do we do that? One answer is that it's easier to read yesterday's news than it is to go out and create a new story. The old, however painful it may be, is familiar, and we as human beings like that. We like the familiar because we know what to expect. If we have to rewrite the story, we're not exactly sure what that looks like. Creating something new, releasing that which has defined us to this point and creating a new definition of our life can be scary. So we make a choice, conscious or unconscious, to stay stuck in the past with what we know rather than step into unknown territory. The comforting news is that we don't have to create the new story alone. The power of God can overcome every obstacle 
and each of us has the freedom to accept and embrace the thoughts we choose. We have the freedom to let go and let God be God in us. We can choose a better way of being, but the new life, the peace, the love, the contentment, it all comes at a price. And we have to be willing to pay the price. The cost of forgiveness and the cost of peace is our willingness to look beyond blaming. Can we do that? Are we willing to stop blaming anyone else or anything that happens in our lives? Are we willing to accept and learn from our experiences and release them to God? When we are truly willing to get off the story, get out of the drama, look at each other with the forgiving eyes of the Christ, the gates to spiritual freedom swing wide open and the universe invites us to walk on through. Forgiveness creates miracles. A Course in Miracles says the holiest of all spots on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. How do we create that holy spot in our lives? How do we create love? The answer is with all things along this spiritual path is simple, but not easy. We create miracles of love, peace, and forgiveness in our lives by giving that which no longer serves us to God. We give it to God, we go within, we become still, we sit in the silence, we have to give up the story, and we can't tell the story if we're sitting in the silence. So we talk to God and we listen. We develop a consistent prayer life. We ask the one divine source for help if the letting go doesn't come easily. And if we are not willing to let go yet, we pray that we might become willing to be willing. And we let God be in charge. We invite the wisdom of God to live in our hearts. And through that infinite wisdom, we find the ways to move beyond whatever is keeping us stuck. We cultivate our faculty of wisdom by giving ourselves over fully to the co-creative process. The key word here is co-creative. God and us together. And as we move into a new week, let's consciously invite spirit to instruct us in all that we say, all that we do. And as we do, we prepare to experience the universe, the miracles, the miracles the universe has in store for us. Because they will happen. Forgiveness has a lot of power. Next week, Reverend Marge Brown will be our guest speaker. She will be sharing wisdom from Jesus, so please plan to join us for that. So we know we are a channel for the flow of abundance. So let's prepare for our time of offertory. We take our gifts, our ties, and our hands if we have them in front of us, or we just envision them in our minds, and we prepare to bless them. Divine love blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we give, and all that we receive. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Special thanks today to Karen and Cindy who have been supporting our services behind the scenes in some part every week. Thank you ladies for all of your hard work. Many of you don't know, they have been taking attendance on Zoom for a year and playing backup as co-hosts for various other parts in the services. So we love you, we bless you, and we truly appreciate you. Thank you for all that you've done. I see clapping, I like that. 
So let's join together in our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you, God.